All right, good morning and happy Sunday, folks. Give me a quick sound check. Good morning, Russ, Dean, Jonathan, Wayne. Wayne, how's the weather over there in Dallas? I'd imagine a little hot. Good morning, David. Hot? Yeah, I would have thought so. All right, folks, we shall jump in here. A uh, couple housekeeping notes. I'm going to be on the road from today until Tuesday afternoon. So I won't be on the mic tomorrow. I won't be on the mic on Tuesday. We'll, um, we'll schedule a session for Wednesday. Make up for the lost time on Tuesday. And then we'll do our typical Thursday as well. Wife and I are heading up to the mountains of Vermont. But I think it should be an interesting week. Um, the other housekeeping note here. Working on a couple of small tweaks here to the buy and sell signals. Going to test these out for maybe a week or two weeks. If things look a little different on my end than your end, that is why. But all right, so what do we got here? The theme of last week was bulls make a little progress. The progress might put them in a good position for a little more upside this week. Can they keep the progress? For the indexes, strongest would be the Dow. Um, and I use the word strongest lightly, loosely. It's a 17 out of 60. Could be a lot stronger. S&P's got a 5. And that's pretty neutral. We're not crazy bullish. We're not crazy bearish. QQQ gets a negative 3. Which is actually a little progress as well. Down on the money makers. The big 14, we'll call them. Strongest would be Meta, Goldman, TSM, JP Morgan, Netflix, Apple... Broadcom, the weakest of the bunch would be AMD, negative 13, Tesla, a negative 12, Amazon, a negative 12. Over on the sectors, top dog is XLP. I think a few of you bought some XLP last week. XLP, Procter Gamble. It's uh, by far, it's got the best setup. I think out of all the sectors. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. XLP gets a perfect 60. Gold gets a 53. My game plan for tonight when the futures open might be a trade here in the gold futures. Real estate a 52. Utilities a 46. Some healthcare, some financials, some industrials. Now, that's, uh, that's good and all. Major thing I would keep in mind, and, um, you know, call it a bias if you want. I haven't seen too many... Call it sustainable rallies. Haven't seen too many periods in time where week after week, month after month, the market just keeps on rallying higher with XLP, real estate, and utilities leading the way. Almost every time we're getting these big sustainable rallies, who's at the forefront? Old Faithful, XLK, SMH, MAG7, FANG stocks. If anything, keep that in mind. But those are your best in show. Semiconductor is very neutral, which is progress, a negative one. XLK, progress, a negative five. And then Miss Kathy Woods, ARC ETF with a negative 24. So 40,000 foot view. It's not the strongest market. S&P's got a five, QQQ with negative three. You've got AMDs and Amazon's negative scores. What I do think we saw last week was a little progress. Now can they keep it? Over on the notes for the week ahead, and um, I'll move this to the side here, 5,300 SPX, I think will continue to be a really important level. The old trusty weekly 21 EMA. They did do a good job last week of propping it back above that level before the close. Very, very important spot. I think it becomes more important when we see momentum down here on the histogram crossing negative for the first time since November. Let me fix the chart here. Think of the relationship between momentum and structure. Keeping in mind momentum comes first. Good example is back here. You get a little negative break in momentum. We lose momentum. They do a pretty good job of defending structure. 
we got to sit through a little tornado. Foundation of the house, really strong. Right? 21 above the 50, 50 above the 200. You get a little break. They quickly get it back above. Quickly back above that 21. They're able to stabilize it. Then when momentum crosses positive, they're boogieing and they're getting continuation of the trend. So now as we pull back here, and we're playing around here at that 21, we've got to take note of that negative break in momentum. Momentum breaks below zero. We end up trading back below that weekly 21. I think there's room for a pullback down to 5,000. In the grand scheme of things, not the end of the world. Uh, a pullback to a rising weekly 50. Not quite the, uh, the most bearish thing ever. But that could be another 250, 350 bucks of downside. Key level, 5,300. What I would do if we're above the 53, take our clarity from our one hour time frame. I think a really simple, really easy rule of thumb this week, S&P's QQQ, if they can trade above their hourly 21 EMA, then I want to go look for spots to get long. Meaning S&P's above their hourly 21, QQQ above its hourly 21. Then what am I looking for? Or who is the strongest on my moneymaker's watch list? Or I can trade the S&P's of the Q's. We're above those key hourly levels. Who is the strongest? Right. Meta, Goldman, TSM, Netflix, Apple. I then want to go look at those names. Try to go find a lower time frame squeeze. We're above key support. These are the best in show, strongest scores. Imagine Monday afternoon, internals are bullish, S&P's QQQ, they're holding above key levels, and then TSM gives us another 15-minute squeeze. In the current market, I think that's our long. We're not calling for days on end of strength. We're not calling for week after week of strength. We're above a few key levels. We're getting a bullish signal on a lower time frame. We're trying to jump in, work a good entry, catch our piece of the move, and then get the heck out of there. That would be my game plan to the upside. Can we hold the hourly 21? Can I get a few triggers across, uh, a few buy triggers across lower time frames? Here comes a 5 minute buy signal, here comes a 15 minute, here comes a 30. Then I look at my money makers watch list, look to get long on a lower time frame squeeze. I'm not going to find a daily squeeze right now that I want to jump in and get long. But I can find that moment in time just like TSM on the 15 minute, 30 minute, or a 1 hour. Jumping over to the QQQ. It did fail to get back above the weekly 21. Which I think into this week. That's a, a pretty big mission here for the Bulls. Mission weekly 21 EMA. Momentum breaks. You spend a few more weeks under that weekly mean. Door opens for a flush back to the lows. They fail to get it back above the weekly mean. They succeed in keeping it above the weekly 50. And also keeping it above that daily 200. The thought process here is if they can keep the little bit of progress they've made, maybe they can open the door for a move back to the 21 EMA. QQQ back up to 460-ish, and maybe S&P's back up to 5400. If they drop the ball and lose all the progress, S&P is back under 5300, QQQ back under an hourly 21. Yeah, that, that might be all she wrote here as far as the pop. Hourly chart. We can find a little clarity. We can keep our risk nice and tight. Nice and simple. They keep it above the hourly mean. I'm looking at the money makers watch list. I'm looking for a lower time frame squeeze to buy it. They break it back below the hourly 21. Same game plan, opposite direction. 
They can't hold those key levels. All right, cool. Who is the weakest on the board? Little Microsoft, some Amazon, Tesla, AMD. I'm going to first go check those names. Any 15-minute squeeze for a short, any 30-minute, any one hour. I'd be a little quicker to, to want to go short a Tesla. Negative 12 out of 60. Then I would be to want to go short a Meta. 51 out of 60. So that's the uh, that's a game plan in a nutshell, guys. I don't think we're in a market where mainly for, and especially for these names on this watch list, I'm looking for a, a multi-day, multi-week swing trade. I don't think we're in the right market for a weekly squeeze, daily squeeze, anywhere from a four-hour, two-hour chart down. I think that'll be a bit more like it. And I put on the uh, the notes there, One of my goals for this week, keep on narrowing the focus. I really do think for me, less is more. So all the way down yonder. I wrote. Weekly goals. Continue to narrow the focus. Less is more. S&Ps, QQQ, money makers, and nothing else. I also want to look for more end-of-day 15-minute squeezes. I, I think a nice little niche. I think throughout the week there could be a few good spots for nice opportunities. A la TSM. If taking an end-of-day 15-minute squeeze to the upside, focus on strength uh, You know, as far as that total score. Opposite for the shorts. This week I also want to look for more opportunities to get short premium. Call credit spreads, put credit spreads. Implied volatility remains a little bit pumped up. If you can nail the intraday uh, intraday direction, can make for some nice easy paychecks. I want to spend less time watching pre-market quotes. Um, you know, I thought at one point there Friday morning, TSM was going to retire me. The bad boy was up three four percent in the pre-market. You know, now you're getting that pre-market high. You're getting that pre-market euphoria. Uh, these calls are going to go up 2, 3, 4%. Or uh, 2, 3, 4x. I'm going to make X amount of money. Then at the open, it, uh, it opens up flat. Bounces a little bit. And we cash in for a 45% profit. I'll take a 45% profit. Not the 400% I thought we were going to get. I don't need the, uh, the pre-market high. So spend less time watching pre-market quotes. And as mentioned, I'm on the road Monday and Tuesday. I want to look for setups that offer good risk award. But I've learned the hard way, um, you know, when you're on the road for a few days, don't push things so hard to the point where it can rob you of your peace of mind. And then I want to take mental notes and screenshots of the tweak settings here for the big three signals. All right, y'all, so overall game plan. Playing the over-under game at the hourly 21. On the S&Ps and the QQQ. That'll be our focus. That'll be our compass. And that'll dictate whether we're looking for longs or looking for shorts. Let's go take a quick look at the other characters here. Uh, the Dow Jones. Which was the strongest of the indexes. Again, we're using the word uh, strongest a little bit loosely. We've got a daily score of 1 out of 12. Little tough to want to jump out of bed for a, a one out of twelve. Um, anything to say about the weekly? I don't have too much profound to say about the Dow. It's uh, it's very neutral. Neutral means lack of clarity. Lack of clarity means kind of tough to call for a long or call for a short. Let it develop. And then the little guys. The Russell. Um, again, I get a negative 1 on my daily. I get a, a 1 out of 12 on my 1 hour. Not getting the warm and fuzzies here. Sit back. Let it all develop. And then the sectors. So as I said, 
the highest score and the best setup uh, by far XLP. Think Procter and Gamble, etc. Check out the setup here. Now I've made the commitment all throughout August and September. I'm only taking trades on my money makers watch list. These fourteen names, the indexes, and the futures. I gotta stick to my guns for at least the next two months. Then I can, you know, sit down and reconsider. With that being said, um, talk about a thing of beauty. Buy signals on almost every time frame. We get one on the five. We got the full shebang, and then all the beautiful squeeze action. A plus on the three day squeeze. The two day squeeze is A plus. The daily squeeze is A plus. Four hour squeeze is A plus. Two hour squeeze A plus. One hour squeeze A plus. Um, yep, there is your one hour. Dare I say the 30 minute has got the white dot. Can I get a 15? I've got a 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 10 time frames, the ultimate combo. Bullish trend, bullish structure, momentum, and compression from the squeeze. They're all building up energy. Indicator says they all want to go for it, for a move to the upside. Looks 100 times better than XLK. Or not even close. Looks 100 times better than SMH. The only thing I would add. Can it work? And by working, what would that look like? I think at a minimum, they fire the daily squeeze. And they're taking price towards 81, 81, 50. To me, that would be the, the daily squeeze working. My question would be, and the thing to focus on would be, can it work without the market behind it? Meaning Monday morning, S&Ps are taking out 5,300. They're dumping down to a new fresh low. Can XLP buck the trend? Fire all the squeezes here to the upside. I tend to think the answer is no. Think of Wednesday's price action. XLP comes out the gate strong. Into the close, big flush. Was that an XLP thing or was that an S&P 500 thing? It was an S&P 500 thing. Wednesday morning, comes out the gate strong, pukes it all up into the close. Can have a negative impact on everything. Take that into consideration in terms of how you approach an XLP. What if the S&Ps bounce back to 5,400? We get a little smooch of the daily 21. Then we roll over and we're taking out the lows at 5,100. Question would be, during that kind of move, do I want to be long anything? And I don't think I want to be, so food for thought. But again, with all that being said, strongest sector, the best setup would lead me to believe even if all we do have coming up here is a bounce back towards 5400 that might all, that might be all the XLP needs to trigger a you know a worthwhile move you might not catch an uptrend that lasts until October but I do think in the short term you might get some nice action here Maybe look to control your risk on a one-hour squeeze. Now, I'll buy it above the hourly 21, and I can cut the trade on a break below the hourly 21. It's a spot where I can keep my risk nice and tight. Better yet, XLP explodes this week. Got a paycheck coming my way. Right, Procter & Gamble, very solid. A plus on the weekly. Almost A plus on the two day. A plus on the daily and A plus here on the two hour. XLP goes 
Procter & Gamble should also go. Can they go without the S&Ps? But as far as a sector, that one definitely sticks out. Um, real estate grades out nicely. And hey, if, uh, if real estate tickles your fancy, there's a good-looking daily squeeze. Utilities. They hold up pretty good here. Will not be a dull week. Gold futures. Gold also grades out pretty good here. Second place to XLP. I wouldn't look to trade GLD. What I would look to trade would be the gold futures. Let me show you what I like over here. The setup and the pattern. I like both. The setup would be the A-plus weekly squeeze. The pattern would be the one you had back here. A-plus weekly squeeze fires to the upside, cranks out a nice move, breaking the action, brand new A-plus squeeze. If the bulls want to, that can be a, a great source of ammunition to keep the uptrend going. Better yet, on the three-day time frame, we've got another one. The setup and the pattern. And then the daily squeeze. All shapes up pretty good here. What I'm going to look for tonight, um, ideally I can get Wi-Fi in the mountain. The one hour squeeze here above the hourly 200. Even though I think the real to-do here would be the bigger weekly three-day squeeze, if I can take that one hour, I can do a really good job of keeping my risks nice and tight. Jump in around 2470. I would cut my long in a break of the hourly 200. Buy it at 2470. On a break below 2450-ish, I'm probably going to cut, uh, cut bait. I'll take on about 20 bucks of risk, we'll call it, in exchange for what? Well, if they can fire the weekly squeeze, I think that can take us upwards of 2,600. I like the numbers there. I like the numbers. If, uh, if I do jump into a long here in the futures tonight, I shall let you know. And as far as things I'm keeping an eye on, folks, that is uh, the immediate watch list. Gold futures look interesting. And then aside from that, it's more of a reaction kind of thing. S&P's QQQ first, playing the over-under game at the hourly 21 EMA. And you all know the drill. North of the key levels, I'm jumping over here. I'm looking for a good-looking lower time frame squeeze. Ideally, where do I want to look first? In the names of the best scores. Meta, Goldman, TSM, Netflix, Apple, Broadcom. S&P's QQQ are south of the key levels. It's all getting a bit nasty. I go look to an AMD, a Tesla, an Amazon. Go look for a good spot to get short. And I think until things change from a, a bigger picture point of view, so long as we are under the daily 21, we've got daily sell signals, I think the, uh, the game plan moving forward. You know, if we're back here, and it's my favorite spot to be, when we're back here, and the S&Ps have a daily squeeze, buy signal, A+, plus, right, QQQ's got an A+, plus weekly squeeze. I don't think you can call for anything better. As far as kicking off the perfect swing trade environment, you got QQQ back here. That can kick off a multi-week, multi-month period where weekly, three-day, daily squeezes, they're the best thing since sliced bread. Outside of that moment in time, I think you drill down to your lower time frames. So TSM, uh, a good example of of all the above. 
we shall look for more of that. And then on the Tesla call credit spread, if they can keep it below that 205-ish, I'll keep on holding on to that trade. Below the daily 200 and below the weekly 21. If they can keep it below that, we roll into Wednesday, Thursday. Should get some nice premium coming in. What I don't want to do is marry the idea of, all right, I've got a short on Tesla, so therefore I am bearish. No, I'll, I'll hold the Tesla short under those key levels, but then give me another TSM 15-minute squeeze. No biases. So that'll be the game plan, and then let us check the economic calendar. Make sure Pavel's not going to sneak up on us. And then, yeah, what I'll do is I'll schedule an uh, economic calendar. I'll schedule a session for us on Wednesday. We'll, uh, we'll do our typical 10.30. Make up for the lost time on Tuesday. But okay, economic calendar. What do you say? Ah, of course. Of course. Tuesday, core PPI. Liable to shake the tree. Wednesday, CPI. More tree shaking. Jobless claims on Thursday, retail sales, yada yada. Friday, consumer sentiment, housing starts. Permits of building, home builder confidence. So major things there would be PPI, CPI. But I don't see any Powell. We've got a Powell this week ahead. But all right, y'all. That is a watch list. That is a game plan. That is my story. I am sticking to it. Index is first. Hourly 21 EMA. With patience, play the over-under game. Look for spots that offer really good risk award. And most importantly, don't approach it uh, approach it with any biases. Biases get you burnt.